Good evening and welcome all of you uh, to our uh, candlelight communion service. Uh, I'm going to have a few announcements later on that I've already recorded with, with the group, uh, but I forgot a couple of things. Uh, please uh, prepare some communion elements for later on in the service. And prepare some uh, bread of any form and, and juice, fruit of the vine, either grape juice or, or wine. Uh, kids are, of course, more than welcome. All are welcome, all who trust in, in the love and the mercy uh, of our Lord. Uh, let us now prepare our hearts and minds to, to receive uh, the light of heaven as we listen to a prelude. Christmas, children of God. Let's listen to a reading from Psalm 147 in the Bible. Praise the Lord. How good it is to sing praises to our God, for he is gracious and a song of praise is fitting. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the outcasts of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of the stars. He gives to all of them their names. Great is our Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. The Lord lifts up the downtrodden and casts the wicked to the ground. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Merry Christmas, and thanks so much for joining us tonight. I want to first of all give thanks for these incredible musicians who have joined us, uh, and give special thanks to Director of Music Ministries here at the church, Sarah Zimmerman. Um, what a blessing uh, they've already been to us and, and will uh, continue to be throughout the service. So thanks so much, Deborah and everyone. Uh, wonderful, wonderful job. Uh, our Christmas pageant uh, is up on YouTube. Uh, act 1 was last Sunday, and uh, Act 2 was just uh, performed at 5 p.m., and so you can see uh, both of them. Uh, the kids did such a wonderful, wonderful job. And uh, our youth director, Lauren Comerford, directed and filmed everything. And there's Lauren right there. Thanks so much, Lauren. Uh, excellent job. Uh, youth groups and small groups are going to start up again uh, in the new year, so come and join us for those on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, and youth groups are on Wednesdays. Uh, the thrift shop is closed for now, but we could still use your help uh, with the food bank and with our soups for salvation. And so if you like to cook, you like to help uh, the hungry, uh, inquire. You can inquire of, of Lauren or me. Uh, what else do I have for you? That's it, because the other announcement was about our 7 o'clock service. So I'll just mention the 5 o'clock service once again. Uh, it was wonderful, and uh, the kids did such a great job. So please check out the service. Blessings to all of you, and a Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Please join us in the lighting of the Christ candle. On this night, we hear the angels speak. Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy. To, to us is born this night, in the, in the city of David, David the, the Messiah, Messiah, God's anointed King, King and, and our Savior. Savior. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in cloth and lying in a manger. Glory to, to God, God in the highest, and on earth peace. Let us, Let us go now to Bethlehem, the, the house of bread. The light of the world has been born. Let us worship the Christ child. Let us pray. Living God, on this holy night, we gather together with shepherds and stand amazed at your glory. We sing with angels, rejoicing in your wonderful work. We wait with Joseph, trusting in your promise. We sit with Mary, cradling your love. So may the good news of this glorious night inspire us to tell the world of our great joy. For unto us is born a Savior, the Messiah and our Lord. Glory and praise to you forever. Amen.
from the prophet Isaiah, who said that, In the latter time, God will make glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you, as with joy at the harvest. As people exult when dividing plunder, for the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the trampling warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us, authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be an endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness. From this time onward and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The burden of our sin has been broken because a child has been born for us, and he would grow up to be a wonderful counsellor and prince of peace. So let's turn to the Lord who sent him in mercy, praying the unison prayer of confession. Emmanuel God, you are always with us, but we confess that we have not embraced your love. We pursue worldly passions and revere false idols. We cherish our possessions and spurn your good gifts. Forgive us, loving God, take away the burden of our sin and teach us the song of salvation, good news of great joy in Jesus Christ our Lord. Hear our hopes and prayers as we enter into the silence of this Christmas night. the good news. In the Christ child, eternal light has entered our dark world. So the darkness of sin, shame, and guilt shall never overcome the light of all life inside us all. Know that you are forgiven and be at peace and sing joy to the world at the coming of the Messiah.
now the wonder of the Christmas story from the Gospel according to Luke chapter 2. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world was taken while Quirinus was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was there. The time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn.
how the shepherds responded to the angels' good news. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they told Mary and Joseph what the angels had told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, which was just as they had been told. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God of love and truth, uh, we praise your name that on this blessed Christmas night, you sent the light of your kingdom into a dark world. Uh, we thank you that in the form of a helpless babe, uh, you provided a hurting world all the help that it needs. Uh, we pray that Jesus would speak to our hearts and minds this evening, that you would move within us and lead us into a deeper compassion, uh, and that you would enlighten our minds and uh, help us to know the truth uh, so that we might serve your purposes in this world of loving and caring and healing all who are hurting. We pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, uh, Luke roots his story about Jesus, the Son of God, in Roman history. And this teaches us that God is intimately tied up into every second of human history. God is constantly calling every human being to the love and the peace and the truth for which they were made. Uh, but the problem is that this calling is a bit ambiguous and transient. God, God speaks to us in whispers and breaths and, and movements within and around us and, and glimpses that come and go. Uh, and in addition to this, we are generally speaking spiritually blind and deaf. And that is why God had to make uh, a unique entrance into human history uh, at the first Christmas in the form of, of the babe in the manger. My eyes started to decline uh, a few years ago, and the first time that things went blurry, I was actually reading scripture uh, in this sanctuary, and I thought that something was really wrong, but I just needed to get some glasses to be able to read God's word moving forward, and I think that's true for all of us. Uh, we all need to put on the spectacles of scripture. Uh, we need to put Jesus over our eyes to be able to see God more and more in our world. Uh, we need to put Jesus into our ears in order to be able to, to hear uh, the love and the peace and the truth for which we were made. Uh, we, we all have intuitions about these heavenly things, uh, intuitions that we can't escape. Uh, and that's because these intuitions, these heavenly powers and principalities have been written on every single human heart. Uh, the sociologist Jonathan Haidt has demonstrated that our moral judgments, our understandings of right and wrong, uh, are, are not about a rational soul uh, that has transcended the passions of the body, uh, but rather are uh, a part of our uh, evolutionary and our cultural wiring. They are intuitive rather than rational. Uh, and, and then after we make these rather quick intuitive judgments, uh, then we rationally reflect upon them in order to justify them, defend them, and, and persuade others of the rightness of our positions. Uh, I think that with this uh, empirical evidence in mind, we can uh, then move into some theology and, and, and say that um, original sin uh, it's less about individual pride, which I acknowledge is, is a big enough problem in and of itself, um, but rather original sin is something that has gone wrong uh, with creation uh, itself. Uh, the Genesis story points to this. The original problem uh, is with some fruit and with a snake, uh, and then that problem gets into Adam and Eve. Uh, the problem has gotten into all of us, into our very DNA. It's gotten into the cultures that we create, and this leads to, to national and tribal pride and righteousness, uh, to the degradation of other tribes and nations and languages, to mistrust and violence, uh, instead of the cooperation and the love for which we were made. Uh, our, our faulty uh, cultural and evolutionary wiring has led our moral judgments astray. And that is why God had to enter into human flesh and history in order to rework this faulty wiring. 
uh, and, and start to perfect uh, the morality uh, that results uh, from this uh, perfected wiring, this corrected wiring. Uh, God's incarnation in Jesus is not a 30-year appearance on earth and then a disappearance in the kingdom of heaven. God's DNA, the incarnation says, God's DNA has fused with human DNA in the womb of Mary and started the rewiring necessary. God has directed the deepest parts of us away from degrading others and mistrusting others and constantly competing with others to trusting them and building them up and cooperating with all the peoples of the earth. Paul confirms this when he calls Jesus the new Adam and the ultimate Adam. And, and even though we may not share uh, a lot of Jesus's DNA biologically, uh, when we come to trust in and follow the way of Jesus, the miracle of the incarnation begins to work within us. Uh, now, perhaps you don't believe in the virgin birth, uh, but you can't seem to shake these heavenly intuitions, uh, and, and you can't seem to shake this guy, Jesus. Uh, I would encourage you to perhaps start with uh, the Gospel of Mark and where he begins his Gospel, and that is with the baptism of Jesus and the coming of the Spirit of love and peace and truth uh, into the flesh of Jesus. At Mark's Gospel and also uh, at Pentecost in the Acts of the Apostles, uh, we, we see and hear about the coming of the Holy Spirit upon all human flesh. So in the new year ahead, I want you to uh, consider reading these short books. Mark, probably take you about 45 minutes to read and think about. Acts, perhaps an hour and a half. Uh, you can read these over the course of a week and learn more uh, about the, the things for which you were made. You learn more about what your purpose is. Uh, you know that uh, what really matters is the invisible and material things of love and peace and truth and goodness. You have a strong sense about these things, but they still seem a bit ambiguous. I want you to, uh, to, to receive some clarity uh, by putting on the spectacles of Scripture and reading about what the great wisdom of our forefathers and mothers has to say about these deepest things within humanity. Um, I'm going to give you a preview uh, about uh, what the Spirit led Jesus to do with his life and what the Spirit led the apostles to do with their lives and therefore what you might do uh, with your own. Now, the Spirit led uh, the apostles in Jesus to embrace otherness. Uh, women who had heretofore been uh, oppressed and separated from society and not empowered to serve publicly, all of a sudden they find themselves welcomed to study with the greatest rabbi of their day and empowered for public service. Mary was the first to proclaim the resurrection of Jesus, and, and Jesus was the one who told her to go and do and make that most important public declaration. Uh, Non-conforming sinners who had been ostracized uh, for not following the rules, they're welcomed, they're forgiven, and, and they're told that they can be, become a part of, of the rewriting, or at least the, the reworking out of the rules with much more grace and breadth uh, and tolerance. Uh, we see the same sort of tolerance with the welcoming of the Gentiles and many of their strange ways uh, into the body of Christ, into the new family of God. Uh, they were embraced by the Jews. It took a little bit of time, but they were embraced, uh, and, and they joined the recreation of humanity in and through the one Jesus who has conquered all of the divisions uh, that inhibit and break apart uh, the one human family. Uh, a Yale theologian named Miroslav Volf has written a very important book called uh, Identity and Embrace. Uh, the identity that we embrace is, generally speaking, for almost everyone, familial and tribal uh, and national, in addition to vocational, which I'm not going to, to go into. Uh, we are primarily a, a daughter or a son of so-and-so, uh, a mother and a father to so-and-so, a brother and a sister to so-and-so. Next in our identity comes our work, uh, and then after that uh, comes our, our worldview, our values. I am a Christian, a Jew, a humanist, an American, an Italian, uh, a Republican, a Democrat. Jesus came to break open these normal ways that we identify ourselves. Jesus makes us 
brothers and sisters to all of our peers. He makes us mothers and fathers to all of the children and youth in our lives. He makes us sons and daughters uh, to all of our elders, to those who have already embraced Jesus and his way, and to those who might embrace that way if we were to show it to them. In Jesus, we all become children of God. We all become fully human. And a child of God and a human being um, become the primary and essential identity which we embrace over all others. The Christmas story exemplifies this beautifully. Uh, a lowly woman takes center stage. Uh, a husband believes her amazing story and, and cares for her on a long journey so that she might give uh, new life to the world. Poor shepherds come, and they are the first uh, new family members to worship the, the newborn king. Sometime thereafter, uh, more well-to-do foreigners, exalted ones, wise men, uh, they come and they join the new family of God, uh, worshiping the newborn king. A helpless baby is the sign of the divine help of God in the world. Um, so what are you going to do uh, with this word of God that you have heard this evening? Are you going to listen to the still small voice within? Are you going to look for the love and the peace for which you were made out there in the world? It's around us each and every day. Uh, are you going to put on the glasses of Jesus and the spectacles of Scripture a little bit more uh, so that you might better hear and better see? And will you lift up the cause of children, women, the poor, and foreigners as if they were your own family, because they are your own family? Do these things and you'll bring the miracle of the incarnation alive in your own flesh. You'll bring the miracle of new life uh, to your homes and to your church and your world. And boy, do we all need that after the last nine months. God is calling you back. God is speaking, yes, uh, in whispers and glimpses and movements. Uh, but when we look and listen and feel, when we give time to our spiritual life, and I charge you to do so in the new year, when you follow the spirit of love and peace and truth out there in the world, it is there, it is calling. Let it be your shepherd. When you do these things, you're going to experience the kingdom of heaven springing up within you and around you as never before. Merry Christmas. All this can happen uh, in and through the one who descended from heaven in order to make the earth the kingdom of God, the one to whom belongs all the power and the glory now and forevermore. And God's people say, as we now prepare ourselves to uh, approach the table of the Lord and feast with him, uh, we, we come forward uh, humbly uh, with a sacrifice of thanksgiving, uh, offering ourselves and our lives uh, to the one born this night. Thank you so much for all that you say and do uh, for the people of God everywhere.
Anyone who hears me and opens the door, I will enter in and feast with them. The risen Jesus also said, Come to me, all of you who are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. So let's open the door of our hearts and enjoy the nourishment that Jesus wants to provide. All are invited. Please join me in the prayer of great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Almighty and loving God, we come before you grateful for your love, joy, and peace. But there are so many places in this world which are lacking in these regards. We thank you for sending us a Prince of Everlasting Peace. Bring that peace to every person and place suffering from war and tyranny. Shine the light of the Christ child in the hearts of the powerful and help them to submit to Jesus' way. Protect the innocent and deliver the oppressed, as you have so many times before. Watch over our troops and those they are sent to serve. Guide their work and bless their families. We thank you for the abundant blessings in our lives while we remember the increase in poverty and hunger in our nation and world. Bless the work of soup kitchens and food pantries and relief agencies. May the bread of life that they share be multiplied. Bless the work of economists and policymakers as well, that they may understand what is needed to further your prosperity, especially for the poor. We thank you for sending the great physician and his healing work around the world. We thank you for scientists and their work on vaccines, for doctors and nurses and the strength you have given them to battle this disease. Bring your kingdom's healing to all who are sick in mind, body, and spirit. We lift up every member on our prayer list and ask for you to bring friends to the lonely and new life to those trapped in sin and grief. We lift them up to you now in silence or with our voices raised. We bless you that your kingdom has come in Jesus Christ, who called Jerusalem to peace, who filled the mouths of the hungry, who healed the sick and loved the lonely. As we break the bread, may you nourish us with heavenly things. As we share one cup, may your mercy be poured out upon us and through us, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. On the night of Jesus' arrest, he was at table with his disciples, sharing the Passover feast. And after giving thanks to God, he took the bread, and he broke it, and he gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. In the same manner, after supper, he took the cup, said, This cup is the new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for you and for the whole world for the forgiveness of sins. Every time you drink this, do this in remembrance of me. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God.
have any candles at home that you can safely light, you're more than welcome to do so uh, as we remember uh, that the light of heaven, the bread of life, has entered the world.
Jesus was with us from the beginning. Through him all things came to be. Now he has come to live among us. His, he is the word made flesh. And we have seen his glory full of grace and truth. I charge you, sisters and brothers, this night to go forth as people of hope and joy, bringing that to all we meet and into the new year. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.